Hello everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I customize briar horses using pastels. So before we begin, I just want to say that I I'm definitely not a professional in this. Like I have customized briars in the past, obviously, other, otherwise I wouldn't know how to do it. But I use some different techniques that might not necessarily be the best thing to use. For example, I'm going to be using spray a combination of spray paint and my sealant as a primer. So that might not be the best thing to use. But like I said, I'm kind of a beginner at this, but not completely, obviously. Kind of going to be showing you how to do it. And also, if it doesn't turn out the absolute most realistic in the end, it's, it's the best I can do. And I think it looks pretty good, so... Just so you know, I am aware that it is absolutely not the best you can find on the internet. And I will not be using the best materials or even maybe methods. So I just wanted to get that kind of disclaimer out of the way. So obviously you're going to need some pastels. Mine are a very cheap set I got off of Amazon for about $10. So they're not that expensive and you can use them for a lot of different things, including different types of artwork or customizing different things. So they're pretty versatile. You'll also need some brushes, mainly some pretty small ones for eyes and white detailing. Some type of spray sealant. I'm using this one that I got at Walmart. I will be using spray paint as a primer and you can actually use a real primer obviously but i'll be showing you how i use spray paint and of course a little bit of acrylic paint mainly white and black but if you don't if you want to add some extra color to the eyes you're going to need a brown and maybe a blue if you want to do a blue eye and i will be using a bit of mod podge to add gloss to the eyes so you are obviously going to need a model horse i'm going to be using this for um, Clydesdale Full, and I have, I bought her as a body model off of eBay, and I had customized her multiple years ago. So, and I used acrylic paints, paints then, so she turned out okay, but definitely not the best. I mean, like, she's okay. <laughs> she's not that great looking though. So well, the first thing I needed to do was get rid of the acrylic paint. Of course, if you didn't already paint your horse, you won't really have to do this. But I found that just nail polish remover and some warm water really removed it really well. And of course, I did use a scrubby to try to get it off, but I didn't really end up needing that too much. I think it was because I used a bunch of layers of Mod Podge in the end, and that kind of made it into a plasticky substance. So I just had to clean it off. So if you have a briar that you already customized, I would recommend removing all the paint so that way you can get nice, get it nice and smooth. Then after that I went outside and I spray painted her completely white. I did two coats just to make sure it was pretty opaque and then I added a coat of my spray sealant to give the spray paint some tooth. Next I'm gonna start pasteling. So with this is the brown I'm using and this is for layer one. Layer one is really easy. You just need a reddish brown color. And I realized I never told you what color I'll be doing. I'm gonna be customizing this briar horse to be a bay color because that is the color that um, was most requested on my saddle pad video. So I just went and dusted the whole thing with this brownish red color and you won't notice that big of a difference at first but you just have to keep going and then later I use a paintbrush at first but then later I switched to using my fingers because I found that that was way easier to apply the color. So I was planning on giving the horse tall stockings so I didn't have to worry about painting or adding pastel to the legs so I just ended up holding those. So layer two was just a second coat of my brownish red color that I coated the body in earlier. I just did a complete second coat all over the body to make it more opaque. Thank you. 
So this is it after coat two. As you can see, I can't get into all the nooks and crannies, but you don't have to worry about that too much in the earlier coats because it will be filled in later. And you can see using your fingers really does color them, but luckily soap and water gets it right off. So for my next color, I'm taking a light brown and I'm putting it up the legs around the rump and up onto the back, up the neck and in the front of the neck as well, the muzzle, the shoulders, and the, I don't think I point to it, but the ears and the cheeks a little bit as well, and around the eyes. So I just added the color to those areas and you can see me coloring it all in in case I didn't explain it too well. So just add them to, add it up to almost, kind of covering the whole thing really, but make sure to leave some that is areas that are still pretty red, like around the belly, the cheeks, and then kind of like the muscle area that comes up, if you know what I mean. Like where the belly is, it, if you know anything about drawing, you'll kind of get an idea of where to put this type of like the shading and coloring, you need to leave where the highlights would be, leave that reddish color and then the low lights, so where it goes in or where there'd be shadow and stuff, that needs to be darker. And of course, follow your reference photos that you're using. Make sure to get a bunch of different angles and different types of bays or whatever color you are painting your horse to be. So this is before and after I added the light brown to the whole thing. So now layer four, I picked a slightly darker brown. It's just the shade up from the lighter brown that I was using. And I added it to pretty much all the same areas. I just made sure not to cover up the light brown completely, but just in this earlier, in these earlier layers, there nothing is going to be super opaque anyway, so you don't have to worry too much if you color cover the whole thing. And like I said, I'm using my finger, and that applied the pastel a lot better. And my sealant that I'm using has a lot of tooth, so it really does grip onto the pastel. So if your sealant is maybe a little bit more smooth or you decide to use a paintbrush because I'm pretty sure a paintbrush is technically the better way to go because there are oils on your hands that can leave fingerprints. But I made sure to wash my hands before every time, before every coat I washed my hands and that ended up not leaving any fingerprints or anything. So I, uh, I realized that was a bit sidetracked. But in the end, I just used my finger and that added the color much, much more heavily than any time I had used a brush in the past. So if you're using a brush, for me, this is layer four, I believe, but it's probably gonna be much higher of a layer if you're using a brush and applying it a lot less, applying a lot less pigment. Or if your sealant doesn't grip onto it as well. So that's it for this layer. And now we're moving on to layer five. 
So I'm pretty much applying the, just another coat of this brown that I was using. It's not super dark, but it is dark enough. Like you can see it, it's, it's kind of a burnt umber color. And I'm just applying it in pretty much the same spots as before. So along the back, the muzzle, the cheeks, down the neck. You can see here that I actually just kind of drew it on, so you can see really where I put it all. And make sure you're always darkening up the legs because bays have pretty dark legs that slowly go down to almost a black color and their noses as well. So make sure you're basically a good rule of thumb is always darken the legs up when you're making a bay. So that's it for layer 5, and now we move on to layer 6. So for layer 6, I wanted to add a little bit more to the highlights on the horse because they weren't super opaque and they're a little white. So I basically just took... My brown that I picked was a little too red, and then in the end it ended up making her, the finished horse, a little bit more orangey than I would have liked. So this is where I made my mistake. I would definitely pick a much more brown color, or use red with a mix of a brown, because this red is way too red, it's not brown enough. But you want to take a lighter color and go back over the highlights to just add more pigment to them and make them more opaque. And of course blend them into the darker colors. Don't worry if you end up lightening up some of the dark areas because we're going to be doing more dark coats as well. So that is it for this layer, and you can see the before and after. Next, for layer 7, I picked a very light cream color and a very light brownish color, and I went over the highlights again just to try to dull them out. This is where I realized the reddish brown I picked was way too red, so I wanted to try to dull them out a little bit more. If you picked a color that was a little bit more um, the right color, then you probably don't have to do this. Or, or you could go in with another coat of the highlight color so that way it matches a little bit more and it's a little more blended in. So next we go on to layer 8 and then here we start building up the darker tones again. So I took a dark, the dark brown that I was using earlier and then I went over all the areas that are meant to be darker and just kind of re-darkened them because the red highlights did add um, some lighter color around where it's supposed to be darker. So I just darkened them up again. And I did use that to kind of blend out the reddish tones of the highlighted parts a little bit more. But, like I said, she ended up being a little too red in the end. So layer 9 is a much darker brown. I just went a couple shades up. And it looks a little blackish on the camera, but it is more of a brownie color. And then I just darkened up pretty much the really dark area. So kind of a door not full dorsal stripe, but it's usually darker around there. Down the legs, of course, the muzzle, the tips of the ears, and around where the mane is. As well as a little bit under the belly.
Now, of course, if you are not doing socks on your model, you're going to want to make sure to go all the way down to the hooves, maybe hold on to the tail or something like that. But since I was putting socks on all her feet, I didn't have to worry about anything like that. I just brought it down to about the knees. And she has feathers on her, her legs, so I didn't have to... I was going to paint those anyway to match her mane. And make sure when you're coloring the legs darker, you only go up to around the knee. So layer 10, I picked a black color. And for some reason, my black and white on my set of pastels are really, really long. I don't know why. But it's not pure black. It, like everything, like pastels are watercolor. You can't really get pure black. It's more of a really dark gray. So I added it around the knees and of course lower, depending how high your socks are. The muzzle, the tips of the ears along just a little bit along the bridge of the back and then between the legs and a little on the belly. video and of course you're going to want to spray it to make sure it's all sealed in I used three coats of sealant just to make sure it all stayed sealed and that's pretty much it for now so I will see you all in the next video and it should be going up in a week or two so don't worry about that and I will see you and I keep saying and I will see you all in the next video so thanks for watching bye